السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله العظيم We have been discussing the interactions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his children. We had a lengthy discussion about his interactions with his wives. We are now in the midst of our discussion of how our beloved master, Prophet Muhammad, interacted with his children. Today we talk about an area where how he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not interfere in minor arguments between his daughters and their husbands. We spoke about the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who they had married and his youngest daughter Fatima may Allah be pleased with her was married to his cousin Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And in the incidents of the relationship between Ali and Fatima, we're going to learn some amazing gems of wisdom, of psychology, of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not interfere in minor arguments between his daughters and their husbands. Sahal ibn Sa'd, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates, that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the house of Fatima and he did not find Ali in the house. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Fatima, where is your cousin? She said, there was an argument between us and we became angry. So he left and did not take his afternoon nap here in the house. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told a man to look for Ali. And the man came back and said that he finds Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu sleeping in the mosque. So now the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself went to Ali while he was lying down and his upper garment had fallen on the side. And the soil, or some of the soil from the floor of the Prophet's mosque had soiled the body of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began wiping the dirt of him and saying, Qum ya Abu Turab, get up, O Abu Turab. Abu Turab means father of the sand. Now from the benefits of this hadith is that it is wise to humor the husband of one's daughter and calm his anger if they, the couple, had a disagreement. We notice that the Prophet of Allah وسلم, did not ask about the details of the argument between Fatima and Ali or the reason that they became angry. Rather, he overlooked all of that and went to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu trying to make him happy. Many times when families get involved in an argument between the couple, it only causes the problems to increase and become more serious. Among other benefits is that the narration tell us 
about the good manners of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He himself goes to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to try to please him and he wipes the dirt, the soil of the body of Ali in order to cheer him up. And he jokingly calls him by his nickname, Abu Turab, to put him at ease. But he did not blame Ali for making his daughter angry, even though she had a very high status in the eyes of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nor did the Prophet speak to him about that. And this is from the beautiful wisdom of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thus, this hadith tells us about the virtue of being gentle to the daughter's husbands and calming them down and not blaming them to preserve their love. Ibn Batal, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, from the benefits of the narration is that even the most virtuous people may still develop problems with their wives. As anger is an integral part of human nature, this may even cause them sometimes to leave the house out of anger. He should not be blamed for that. It is also possible that the reason Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu left the house was his fear that he may say something whilst he was angry that would not be befitting to the high status of Fatima. May Allah be pleased with her. Thus, he cut off that possibility of leaving the house until they both calm down. It is that it is better for the husband to leave the house if he feels that the heat of the argument may cause the marital problems to increase. Just as leaving the house in such a situation may cause him to look at himself, and to realize any mistakes that have been made which may not occur if he stayed at home. As for Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her. She did not leave the home. Rather, she stayed in her own home. This is something that lessens the problems. And it lessens the problems and its effects as opposed to if she had left for her father's home. Thus it is the responsibility of the family to have and play a positive role in guiding and advising the wife to be patient and to treat her husband kindly. If one of his daughters visited him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would welcome and honor them. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, or rather, before even continuing here, let me complete the incident between Rasulullah and Fatima and Ali. We find that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the masjid and he found Ali lying in the masjid, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held the hand of Ali after wiping off the soil from his body, goes to the house of Fatima and he lies down, placing Ali on the one side, Fatima on the other side, placing the hand of Ali on his chest, holding the hand of Ali and placing the hand of Fatima above his hand. And he says to both of them, say, we have reconciled. And they both said, we have reconciled. When the Rasulullah immediately subsequent to that walks out of the house, the companions see the face of the beloved Prophet ﷺ glowing out of the radiance of happiness. And they ask him, Ya Muhammad, O Prophet of Allah, why are you so happy? The Prophet said, Why should I not be when I've just reconciled between Ali and Fatima? Subhanallah. Coming back. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would welcome and honor his daughter. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, I have never seen 
anyone closer in character and guidance to the Messenger of Allah in his looks, his good conduct, and in all of his affairs more than Fatima, the daughter of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She also said when Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, visited the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would stand up. He would stand up to receive her, kiss her, and seat her in his place. And when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam visited Fatima, she would stand up to him, kiss him, and seat him in her place. In the narration of Abu Dawood, may Allah be pleased and show mercy upon him, it is recorded that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took her hand, kissed her, and he did this out of honor for her. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that Fatima came one day as she walked like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Welcome my daughter. Then he set her down on his right or left. This hadith also indicates the place of Fatima, the rank of Fatima in the Prophet's heart. His love for her and the way he honored her when he met her. Where are these gentle manners in the hard-hearted people who think that frowning and severity are signs of manhood and a good way to raise children, especially their daughters? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raised his daughter to disdain the worldly life and to give charity. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Fatima. May Allah be pleased with her. And he found a curtain on her door. So he did not enter and he would rarely return from a journey without starting with visiting her. When Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu came and saw her concern, he asked her what the problem was. And she replied, the Prophet of Allah came to my house, but he did not enter. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, O Messenger of Allah, Fatima is concerned because you came to our house. So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what do I have to do with the life, with this life? And what do I have to do with, this, with its ornaments? I saw a colored striped curtain on her door, so I did not enter. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I went back to her and told her what he said. At this she said, Tell him to order me to dispense with it as he wishes. So he went and said that to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tell her to give it in charity to the children of so and so, a family that was in need. Ibn Hajar rahimahumullah says that Al-Muhallab, may Allah's mercy be upon him, and others said that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not like for his daughter what he did not like for himself. That the good things would be their reward in this life only and not in the next. He did not intend that putting a curtain on the door is forbidden. This is similar to when she asked him for a servant. So he said, should I, not, should I not guide you to what is better than a servant? Then he taught her the words to remember, the words of remembrance to make before sleeping. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he guided his daughters to the best of this life and the next. May Allah be pleased with him narrated that Fatima complained about the effect on her hands from using the mill. 
So she came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to ask him for a servant girl. She did not find him, but she mentioned it to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, who mentioned it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he came home, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu continues, so he came to us when he had gone to, when we had gone to bed. And when he came to our home whilst we were just about to go to bed, and we were going to stand up, but he sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us, stay in your places. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam sat between us until I felt the coldness of his feet on my chest, meaning he sat right with them. Then the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Should I not guide you? Should I not guide you too to that which is better for you than a servant when you go to bed? Then say, when you go to bed, say, Allahu Akbar 34 times, Subhanallah 33 times, and Alhamdulillah 33 times. The Prophet of Allah said, this is better for you than a servant. The reason that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not give them a servant is that he chose to donate whatever came to him to the poor people of the Sufha. And he was of the view that patience was better for his family because it is greater in reward. It also shows the gentleness used in dealing with one's daughter and her husband as he did not ask them to get up when he came to them and left them to stay in bed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam even sat between them and he taught them what was better than the servant they had asked for. This beautiful way is a method of teaching a person what is better than what they had asked for, showing them that preparing for the next life, having patience and not being deceived by this worldly life is more important than what one is seeking. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also taught them another du dua which would be better for her than a servant. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu says and narrated that Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam asking for a servant. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told her to say Allahumma rabbis samawati sab wa rabbul ard وَرَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ رَبَّنَا وَرَبِّ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَالِقُ الْحَبِّ وَالنَّوَى وَيُنَزِّلُ التَّوْرَاةِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَالْفُرْقَانِ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ كُلِّ شَرٍ شَيْءٍ أَنْتَ آخِذٌ بِنَاسِيَتِهِ اللهم أنت الأول فليس قبلك شيء وأنت الآخر فليس بعدك شيء وأنت الظاهر فليس فوقك شيء وأنت الباتن فليس دونك شيء أقضي عن الدين أو الله the meaning of this dua أو الله Lord of the seven heavens and Lord of the earth and Lord of the mighty throne our Lord and Lord of all things the one who splits the seed and the date seed and reveal the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran. I seek refuge in you from the evil of everything that you have taken by his forelock. O oh Allah, you are awal, the first. So there is nothing before you. And you are al-akhir, the last. So there is nothing after you. You are al-zahir, the highest. So there is nothing above you. And you are al-batin, aware of the subtle secrets. So there is nothing closer than you. Settle our debt for us and enrich us from poverty. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam advised Fatima 
to take responsibility for her actions. He told her, O Fatima, rescue yourself from hellfire, for I cannot save you from Allah. The wording of this hadith is reported by Imam Bukhari. Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, ask whatever you want of my wealth, but I cannot save you from Allah. Mean, meaning, do not depend on your noble lineage, for I cannot protect you from any harm that Allah intends for you as a result of your action. These were some of the beautiful ways that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam interacted with his children, how he taught his children, how he advised them to rather seek the benefits of the year after. And in the most beautiful, in the most gentle way that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam provided for the spiritual, emotional, psychological development of his children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy and wisdom provide you and I the ability and the capacity to learn from our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the mannerism in which to deal with the challenges of raising children. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh until we meet again next week. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Muhammad Nabi 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 Nabi